The Israeli capital market has experienced quite a few changes in the last years. These changes affect all players in the market, and in light of this have implications of the law as well. During the next few minutes, I will discuss two legal issues that stem from the, these developments and relevant to the offense of inside trading that was, I was what I was asked to speak about. Some of the significant changes are in the size, in the early 2000s, the Israeli capital market included around 670 listed companies. These days, there are about 560 listed companies. 460. And the other are only debt. Although these are about, although the decline of the number of publicly traded companies during the same period, the market cap of securities traded on Tel Aviv Stock Exchange nearly quadrupled. In addition, there was an increase in the volume of information public re regarding public traded companies. Another point is the increase of complexity of the information public published. These days, information regarding public companies requires expertise of the trader in a variety of areas in order to analyze it. Examples include information about the stages of drug developments, testing and approval by authorities, or technical information arising from oil and gas drilling reports. Another change is the high accessibility of the information. As we well known, in the last decades, the internet has transformed the world into a global village in which extensive information accessible to all. In light of this, there is a high accessibility to information related to the activity of public companies, which is published not only in the reports of the companies to, re to the relevant stock exchange, but also in the media, in financial news sites, and even in stock, in social networks. Before we move on, I'll mention the rise of a dual listed companies after the enactment of a dual listing law in Israel, a trend that ex enhanced foreign, foreign investors' involvement in Israel publicly traded companies. By doing so, an analysis is made for the information public to regard Israeli companies by investors, analysts, and experts outside of Israel. I would like to point out that today there are about 60 dual listed companies in Tel Aviv stock exchange market. And some of these have the highest market cap in Tel Aviv stock exchange. I would like to mention that the dual listing arrangements established by law was recently extended to include dual listed companies traded in stock exchange in the US, in UK, Singapore, Hong Kong, and Canada. These changes and developments often, often require adjustments by legislator, the regulator, and the courts, and the enforcement authorities to the manner in which they, they, they protect a public interest in existing of a fair and efficient capital market. In view of the requirements, I will discuss two issues relevant to the present era of the Israeli stock market from my legal perspective. The first one I will discuss about the relates to the question of the relevance of definition of the term reasonable investor, Mashkia Savir, given the significant changes had occurred in, occurred in the Israeli capital market. The principles on which the Israeli securities law is based include the requirements of full disclosure, the prohibition of inside, insider trendi, trading, and prohibition of manipulation and fraud. All of these are important in order to, to form links in change designed to protect the reasonable investor in the capital market. The term this reasonable investor is used by the court when it required to examine the materiality of the information that has been published or not published to public regarding a particular security. The question we ask is whether the information in question was at the knowledge of a reasonable investor. Would it be likely to have significant effect on the price or on the investor behavior regarding the investment. The term reasonable investor, this investor is also used to determine the existence of material non-public information in cases involving inside, insider trading charges. In the Israeli law, this offense includes several components. The first, insider, then the inside information, and the thirdly, the use of inside information as to the mens rea required for in insider trading criminal liability. I will elaborate on later on. 
These days, information regarding public companies can be published in variety, in variety of ways, and it's often asked whether it was disclosed to the public in accordance with the law or not. For example, with respect of information published in a conference held by a company abroad, or with information about negotiations regarding a significant transaction published on the US financial news website. Can one say, can one say that the Israeli public, the reasonable investor, has access to these kinds of information? Usually information published in these types of ways will be known only to some investors, the ones we define as sophisticated investors. In the Pollock case in 1997, the former president of the Supreme Court of Israel, Professor Barak, recognized the importance of the manner in which the information is published, published to investors, while distinguishing between sources of information and their accessibility to the reasonable investor in relation of the duty to disclosure. If we, if we focus on Israeli capital market, there are situations in which the constant development of the capital market had an effect on information accessible to investors, especially sophisticated ones. I will point out a few, a, few, a few changes. Beyond the increase of volume of information and its availability to the public, the capital market is currently experiencing an era of professionalism, as we see it. Sophisticated investors led by, led by institutional investors have the ability to process and analyze the information that is published to the public with the highest quality. These investors employ many analysts who can identify the potential for future changes in the value of the securities of the traded companies and derive profits from it. I will also mention entropy as a professional, a professional and important that advises institutional investors how to vote in general meetings of shareholders in public companies. In addition, Institutional investors are given an advantage by virtue of law. An IPO on the Israeli stock exchange is conducted that the roadshow is first carried out for institutional investors and the tender is held in which they only can participate. And only then another tender is made for the general investor public. Sophisticated investors often get direct access to senior managers in companies a right that does not exist for investors from the public. Companies invest a great deal of energy for institutional investors to invest in them. This, this is reflected in the significant activity of IR departments in public companies. Companies have a clear interest in disclosing information regarding their activities, both to potential investors and to existing, existing investors. And this leads to a dialogue between the investors and the company's executives. I will clarify that I do not assume that companies transfer information to sophisticated investors illegally without it being disclosed to the public. But one can get, cannot get ignore the fact that sophisticated investors enjoy the constant avail availability of senior executive pub of public companies while the reasonable investors does not enjoy such availability. An example of the new definition of reasonable investor in the capital market is found by the Bronfeld case that was brought before me this year. I gave the sentence this year and there was no appeal as, a, as far as I know. Uh, you did? This was a criminal economic case at the center of which was the offense of inside trading. Unlike other cases dealing with this offense, in this case, the defendant was a sophisticated investor who monitored the performance of a company and its shares, and its shares for years while executing transactions based on his assessment that a certain positive event would, would take place in this company. I would like to clarify that in Brofeld case, there was a, vari a variety of unique circumstances all of which led to the determination that the, it was not proven beyond reasonable doubt that the defendant did indeed commit the offense attributed to him. Accordingly, the determinations in this case were appropriate and specific to this case, and they do not affect any other cases that dealt with the offense of inside trading. So if, if anyone is hoping that in this, this sentence will lead me to the same result in the next cases or cases that are dealt with these days, so he will be wrong. 
The main disagreement in this case was if the purchase of shares was a product of inside trading regarding an incoming tender offer or whether the defendant as a sophisticated investor chose to invest in a company since he estimated that the tender offer was to be made. In the verdict, I, I'm quoting now, the defendant version has been constant, consistent and coherent. Defendant has acted since 2011, identified the potential of the company and estimated that the controlling shareholder will issue a tender offer. All of the defendant's predictions that the company was a worthwhile investment have been verified. Whether it was his initial assessment of an individual distribution which benefits shareholders or whether it was his assessment of the future of the tender offer, which also benefits the shareholders. In view of the above, the defendant tried to acquire shares of the company over a period of time, acquired shares, and he did succeed to, to acquire shares, and later he recommended his associates about its worthwhile. In conclusion, when examining the weight of circumstantial evidence presented by the prosecution, the conclusion was that the strength of the evidence was low and they did not stand alone in view of unique circumstances of the case. In the, in, in, if in the past the legal examination of information disclosed what through the eyes of Mrs. Cohen from Khadera, as the courts used to mention, perhaps the time has come to consider re-examining the term of reasonable investor in the Israeli market. The second issue that I will discuss about relates to the development of a manner in which the inside trading offense is being enforced by the Israeli Security Authority, which distinguishes between the manner in which this offense is enforced when the violator is negligent and, in, and cases in which the, this offense is committed on a, me, a more severe me, mens rea. The, the distinction based on the level of mens rea does not currently exist in law or in a case law concerning the offense of inside, insider trading. And therefore, it consists a renewal and hierarchy for the manner in which this offense is enforced. First, a few words about the ISA enforcement procedure for violation of the law. The authority of the ISA to carry out administrative enforcement proceeding is new relatively and was granted in 2011. But virtue of the, eff the efficiency of enforcement procedure in the securities law, although this is relatively new, the ISA invests considerable resources in conducting administrative enforcement procedure. And this is evident for, from data published recently by the ISA. About a week ago, the ISA published a document regarding its enforcement policy in the criminal, administrative, and private spheres. The document contains the principles in which this enforcement is carried out. In this context, emphasis is placed on distinguishing between opening a criminal investigation process and the process of administrative clarification in the ISA. The ISA clarified that in this document that it exercises the power of criminal enforcement in order to deal with severe offenses committed in the capital market, such as fraud or, inciting, or insider trading. As for administrative enforcement, it was noted that the administrative procedure would be instituted when the violator acted negligently and when a violation was committed in which the mens rea was more severe. But the circumstances of the offense justify it. For example, when low profits were granted from the violation or when limited damage was caused, etc., the administrative enforcement course is attempted to make enforcement more efficient in the matter of enforcement of violation of security laws. Especially regarding insider trading, this distinction made by the ISA between negligence and the more severe mens rea constitutes in practice an innovation regarding the offense insider trading since the law requires awareness by the violator to all elements of the offense. The, the innovation is in the examination of mens rea of the violator. If he committed the breach negligently, he may be exposed to administrative enforcement procedure. And if he committed the offense under a more severe mens rea, he may be exposed to a criminal enforcement procedure. 
there is no dispute that the distinction is a great sig significant to the violator in higher in light of the difference in the implication that will be will bear between these two enforcement tracks to conclude my 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 remarks i would say the two issues that i presented in this brief uh, lecture both the question of relevance of the content of the content that the case had been given to the concept of reasonable investor and the scale related by, us, by, uh, by the ISA in enforcing the offense of inside trading stem from development experience by the Israeli capital market. As I mentioned earlier, the legislature, the regulator, the courts, and the enforcement authorities must ensure that the public interest in, in the existing of the efficient and fair capital market is adequately protected in periods of innovations and changes. Thank you very much. Uh -huh.